the animation in Mobile Suit Gundam actually improves and changes over the course of the series. Not the franchise, just the original Mobile Suit Gundam itself. The animation actually gets better. Why? Well, original Gundam had a staff member named Ichiro Itano, a now legendary animator and still at the time a well-respected animator who was really interested in pushing forward animation quality in animation and making animation look more cinematic. Up until Gundam, the way that information was presented in anime was typically what I call one thing, one shot. And that means that if you had multiple characters in a scene, for example, you might start with a wide shot of multiple characters, but then very quickly you cut to a shot of one character talking, then another character talking, then another character talking. You rarely had two characters in the same scene interacting. And if you did, it would just be two static characters and their you know, mouths moving. Um, and the same thing extended to action sequences. If you had a car chase, for example, you would see one car going down the road, and you see cut to the car that's chasing it running down the road. You might see both cars at once, um, but al almost always statically, i.e. you would not see both of them interacting in the same shot, uh, unless there was a very specific moment in which the two had to interact, like one crashed into the other. Um, there was this standard that the camera was what's called locked down in movie parlance, i.e. the camera is simply locked to a position and an angle and doesn't move. And to be fair, this is what early film looked like. They didn't move the camera around, there were no sweeping pans and zooms and things like that in early cinema. The camera simply pointed at something and filmed it. Now obviously this changed relatively early on in film in the 30s and 40s and such. But this hadn't really hit anime for a couple of different reasons. One being the fact that anime is farmed out across so many different people that if you try to add more dynamism to shots, you try to have multiple things going on in the same shot, multiple things interacting in the same shot, um, one animator will animate that differently than another animator and you will tend to have inconsistency. So um, it was something that um, you didn't see a lot of in anime for that reason. To see this in action, let's look at the big sequence involving the fate of Matilda-san. And yes, that's why I have the spoiler card at the beginning of this video. Throughout this sequence, notice that we keep cutting between different vehicles and characters in the same sequence. I.e. we rarely see multiple different vehicles in the same shot. We see one vehicle going towards another vehicle, stuff like that. We may see one vehicle in the foreground with another vehicle in the background, um, but one of the other of those will be locked off. It won't be moving significantly. Uh, it has this very static feel to it, which is very typical of anime of the time. Now, if a ship crashes into another ship, we may see that in one shot, but rarely will we see those two uh, ships in the same shot leading up to that crash. You may have also noticed that the camera rarely moves. The camera doesn't pan across things, it doesn't zoom in uh, to a great extent. It might do an occasional dramatic zoom into a character, but the camera is pretty locked down throughout the scene. Now let's fast forward to the Battle of Aobawaku at the end of Mobile Suit Gundam. And here you see a lot of shots of multiple mecha firing at each other and the camera moving around those uh, those vehicles. We see both uh, multiple uh, mecha involved in the same shot and a sweeping dynamic camera movement in this. And this is Ichiro Itano. This is what he was championing throughout uh, Gundam, this idea that they could bring movement to the camera into Gundam. Now the problem is, this is hard to do. This is technically complex and it takes time to plan and draw these shots. And so it's not something you can just decide to do, especially in an anime series like Gundam that was very technically challenging, um, did not have a huge budget, certainly by modern standards, um, and was really trying to innovate in a lot of different, different ways. So Itano was not able to do this constantly all throughout the show. It took a lot of of work and development of this concept over time. 
And even in Abu Aku, you don't see a lot of it, but partly because obviously Itano is not animating every single shot, and other animators are starting to pick up on this idea by this point. Um, but it's just something that is too expensive, frankly, and too time consuming to do on a wide scale. Also, confidentially, if the animation style changes that dramatically over the course of a series, it can feel out of place. So you don't necessarily want to innovate that stuff a lot while the show is going on. Now, you'll see this developed much more in Tomino's next series, Space Runaway Ideon, where there's a lot more of this dynamism between different ships in the space combat. And, uh, of course, you see it much further on in the rest of Sunrise's series, moving on from there. And it became a very typical thing in anime. Now, anime still doesn't do this a huge amount, again, because of the, the cost reason. Um, the more complex your shot, the more time it takes to, to plan it, to draw it, um, to check it, to make sure that there are no mistakes. Um, moving a camera in animation is actually a drawing technique. The animator has to, you know, change the drawings, and so a lot of technical mistakes can creep into that, which is why it's so difficult to do, and it's why it's relatively rare. Um, but you certainly see it happening uh, more and more over the course of Gundam, and uh, it's something that Gundam helped bring into the world. Now, to be clear, this was not the first anime series to ever think of the idea of moving the camera around. Um, it happened in some movies and such, moving up to Mobile Suit Gundam. But um, it's very rare to see this in anime prior to Gundam, certainly TV anime prior to Gundam. Um, and it's a lot more common after Gundam. So I think it's pretty clear to, to say that Gundam was an innovator on that point. So there you have it. Thank Ichiro Itano for the dynamism of anime in the modern era and for doing it in Gundam.